Law firm success strategies will begin after a brief word from today's sponsor, Answering Legal. Visit AnsweringLegal.com to learn more about our virtual receptionist team. Answering Legal is staffed with trained professionals who know how to handle legal calls in a professional, courteous manner. And that provides a positive experience to callers. The receptionists are trained and understand the type of calls that our firm is getting. They can answer frequently asked questions. They can take messages. They can schedule appointments. And that allows us to, one, promptly respond to our client. And two, we have a record. That is probably the most crucial part of this business. Welcome to the Law Firm Success Strategies Podcast. This show is created specifically to address the unexpected challenges that lawyers face when stepping into leadership roles and business roles to grow and secure the future of their firms. I'm your host, Doug Brown, the Law Firm Leadership Coach, and I'm thrilled to welcome today's guest, Michelle Calcott-King, a PR and marketing communication strategist. Michelle specializes in elevating professional services firms, especially law firms, to new heights. She's the principal at her firm and she's crafted numerous successful campaigns that have enhanced firms' reputations to drive business growth. And I'm looking forward to this, Michelle, because I know how PR is a really powerful, almost secret strategy. And I'm looking forward to hearing how your strategies and thoughtful marketing can help our viewers transform their firm's presence and get an advantage. So, Let's get started. Welcome. Yeah. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to talk to you. Yeah, me too. So could you share with us as to start your journey into PR and marketing? What what led you to work with law firms? Yeah. So, well, I went to school. I started out, um, went to school to be a journalist um, at first um, and uh, found out that they didn't make a lot of money. So... Um, <laughs> Switched to uh, public relations, thought that would be the the way to kind of stay in the journalism discipline um, and, uh, you know, have a have a bit more of a, a, a better quality of life um, and um, started out right in um, public relations agencies. Um, and immediately I started, I actually started out right in London during the dot com boom and really realized I liked uh, sort of the more B2B type accounts. I worked in an agency that had both consumer and B2B. Um, and I liked the the challenge that B2B, um, so business to business um, accounts. So at the time it was tech. Um, and then I moved on to other agencies and just sort of found my way into professional services and working with lawyers. Um, and, you know, lawyers are smart people. They work on um, matters that impact a lot of people um, that are, you know, impactful to a wide range of industries. I like the topics that um, we get to write about and talk about. Um, So it's it's just interesting work. So and, you know, as my kind of career expanded, I expanded beyond PR and um, sort of understood the full scope of how you uh, market a professional services firm. And then, of course, I started my own firm 13 years ago. Um, and really had to to market it to grow it. So you know, and I've grown my firm to to a, a big firm um, through the the tactics that I now use uh, working with other professional services firms. So so yeah, we, we really we really enjoy all of it because it's just it's a it's a thinking discipline. Um, it's not just tactics. It's substantial, really impactful issues that you know everyone is uh impacted by on a day to day it's things like the FTC banning non competes it's you know it's 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 things that we're all talking about on a day to day that lawyers are are um working working in and on so yeah that's that's terrific i i found my way back to working with with lawyers for much the same reason really smart passionate people uh didn't really learn all that that much about business or pr for that matter and but i found I mean, have you found with lawyers that once they get the formula, once they kind of understand what you're doing and why, that they just got a big advantage as as your clients? Hundred percent, yeah, absolutely. I mean, once once they see success, so you know, lawyers are skeptical. That's a, a trait that 
runs throughout the profession. So, um, and, you know, uh, it, it benefits them. They deal in a, a risk industry. So, um, and once they see success and have success, they're, they're really your biggest champion. And, and, um, we always joke to find the coalition of the willing, um, within a firm to really work with us. But, um, yeah, once, once they're bought in, it, it becomes exciting and you can really, um, you can make a difference, um, for you know, yeah. specific attorneys and firms. So, so, so what are some of the most well, your favorite strategies for firms that want to get more visibility and credibility using PR? So a big part of what we do is uh, taking the expertise that's in a firm and sort of pulling it out of the lawyer's heads and, uh, you know, getting it into media channels. Um, so whether that is uh, the media, so uh, legal media, business media, and what, whether that looks like uh, bylined articles, blog posts, videos, podcast interviews, um, or it could be owned media, meaning uh, blog posts, email, social media. So we are what I often call sort of those in-house journalists. We're the ones kind of, and I also use this term knowledge extraction. We're kind of going in, we're interviewing the lawyers, we're pulling that knowledge out, and then we're, we're connecting it to uh, the media and we're kind of translating it and what, what um, and we're, we're giving the analysis. We're kind of training lawyers to say, okay, what is this, what, what is this new, you know, what did this decision mean and how will it impact your clients and what's probably next? And that helps clients understand, you know, how does this lawyer think and um, how can they help me and what expertise do they have and what experience do they have? And it really demonstrates, it really showcases a firm's uh, expertise and knowledge without them just saying it. Um, it proves mm -hmm. it yeah. in a way that uh, advertising could never do um, in a very credible way. And when it's done on a consistent basis, it's really powerful. Um, so that's what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and it just depends on, it depends on the firm's style. It depends on the firm's um, preferences. It depends on the firm strategy in terms of what channels that we're using, um, but they're all pretty effective um, depending on the goals of the firm. One of the things that it took me a while to get when I had my first PR person as a as a friend is is how PR is different than advertising. Yeah, because I think lawyers are used to I pay money, I get exposure, I get advertising, I get hits, and PRs different, right? Yeah. How, how is it different in your mind and maybe better than advertising? So different. There's a lot of differences. One, control. So advertising, you have complete control. You Once you buy it, you can uh, decide on the placement. You decide uh, what you say. You have um, complete control over it. Um, PR, it's um, you're hoping and um, your, um, your sort of earning, that's why we call it earned media mm -hmm. versus paid media. You are earning your place in that publication. So you're really convincing an editor that one, you have something really worthwhile to say, worthwhile to write, whatever your topic is. It's of interest to their readers, their viewers. Um, so you don't you've you've lost that control, um, but it becomes much more credible to the audience. So you get that third party endorsement factor from the the media outlet, which is really critical. You know, things change a lot. Um, and um, I believe authority is becoming so critical in today's marketplace because of how things are changing on the Internet. Um, people don't trust a lot of things and actually people are trusting very credible media outlets more and more. So um, if you are featured in those media outlets, that then boosts your authority and your credibility. And in the law, the law is uh, very um, credibility is, is a very sure. big factor in that sure. process and that selection process. So um, that's why it's so important versus advertising. There's just, they don't have that sort of, uh, it doesn't yeah. convey that credibility. Whereas, you know, you know, personal injury. So we're talking, and I'm kind of speaking in terms of more of a, a B2B uh, law perspective, whereas like you see like billboards and TV ads, 
that's more top of mind familiarity tactic, right? They're mm -hmm. just trying to make sure that when you get in an accident, that's the first name you remember, right? And there's definitely on the B2B side, there's definitely still a familiarity top of mind strategy, but there's also a credibility, there's a real credibility strategy here, uh, much more so on a B2B uh uh, yeah. strategy. So versus just top of mind, top of mind, you know, Geico ads everywhere when I'm <laughs> at the, or when I'm at the, uh, you know, purchase, you know, the grocery store, you know, it's a, it's a quick purchase, um, B2B. It's about that long decision-making process. And I have convinced that person that I have the expertise that I need. And that's where things like PR come into play and, you know, publishing those articles being featured in these kind of interviews, um, all of that adds up to that um, that credibility factor. Yeah, yeah, I've seen that time and time again. Yeah. One of the things I preach, I guess, is, is a good word, is that lawyer marketing in general is uh, tends to be a lot about them and why they're, why they're terrific and who their teams are and you know they're trustworthy yeah. and, and all that. But in my experience that, you know, if people have a choice to not go to a lawyer, they're going to choose that. Sure. And, and so <laughs> that, it, that it's really about making that emotional connection with uh -huh. someone mm -hmm. who, before you can even talk about your own skills and credibility, you have to make that connection to see this is my person. Because mm -hmm. even in a corporate context, that's a person mm -hmm. making a, um, a decision to trust you as a lawyer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Have you found that in PR as well? Yeah. Well, and I think that plays a, a, across the wide range of marketing and it's more so to, it's a generational shift. I, it was interesting. I was just at a legal marketing conference and I was listening to a, a presentation about attorney bios and we write a lot of attorney bios. And this one particular firm had done this analysis of all their attorney bios. And what they found was that the bios where the lawyers had uh, had some personal information in them, you know, about their hobbies or who they were as a person, those sections got a lot more clicks, a lot more yeah. readership. And, you know, what the, what they, uh, the guess was that, you know, this generation um, wants to know people personally mm -hmm. more than past generations. So you've got, older lawyers who, you know, no, this is that, that part of my life is completely separate. I would never put it into a bio, you know, mm -hmm. who I am, what I, you know, uh, what are my hobbies? Do I have children? That kind of thing. Um, and what we're, our counsel to lawyers is this is a shift. People want to know the whole you and you don't mm -hmm. have to give everything. You can do a separate, you know, uh, a, a bit of separation, but in general, you have to show a bit of who you are as a person. And yes, PR can help with that, but also things like in sort of, you know, podcasting, video, um, social media. There's a lot of ways to do that. You can add a bit of personality in your bio. Um, so yeah, any way you can demonstrate a little bit of who you are and how, what it's like to work with you. Um, that will go a long way, especially with these shifts that we're seeing. And also, you know, just the shifts that we're seeing after the pandemic, you know, and now with AI, people are craving a bit more of that uh, direct human to human connection. Um, so absolutely. Yeah. And that, that human to human connection is, is really what allows referrals to happen. Mm -hmm. And when I'm working with my clients on where does your business come from? They say, well, referrals. Like, well, mm -hmm. well from who? Oh, I don't know, just referrals. So that's an interesting conversation maybe for another mm -hmm. time. But but how can a good PR strategy where you're um, doing all the magic that PR people can do, um, how does that help with referrals? People that might already know you, but may not think of you. Well, I mean, well, first people have to know who you are in order to refer business to you. So that's sort of step one. You know, I, I talk a lot about it. Um, I just did this whole webinar on email marketing. Um, step one is awareness. And that is really where PR comes into play. People have to know who you are and what you do and be, a, uh, and be convinced that you have the expertise that you say you do. 
Um, that's really the where PR shines. There are other tactics that once you've kind of uh, achieved that awareness, where you have to nurture your uh, re- uh, referral sources or prospective leads. Um, that's where other tactics like email, social media, uh, because most people, when they first become aware of you, they read an article and they're like, wow, this, you know, this lawyer uh, seems to answer a lot of questions that I have. They seem pretty smart, but they might not have a need for you right then and there. They want to kind of keep engaged with you. Um, they want to keep learning from you. So that's why you have to have a way for people to kind of stay engaged with you. And that's where things like email and social are critical. So and that's where the, you know, you keep uh, top of mind and PR, PR, you can keep um, staying top of mind through the media, but that's where that kind of mix of tactics helps you. And, and PR can feed those other channels too. So use PR to kind of feed content um, through social and email um, and keep saying, hey, I'm credible. Look, the media keeps publishing me. Mm-hmm. Um, and mm-hmm. you're kind of uh, pushing it out to your network. But first and foremost, they've got to be aware that you exist. Um, and so, but then you've got to keep them engaged so that then when the opportunity comes to refer you, um, that then they, they know who you are and that you're top of mind. If if somebody's listening to this and they say, gee, I want some of that. <laughs> that sounds pretty good. What what could they expect that a firm like yours, that a PR firm could um, do to help them do all those things? Like yeah. How, what what if they're gonna play, if you're gonna play a position on their team? What positions do you play? What do you help them do? Yeah. So um, we first um, uh, work with we we start by holding discovery meetings where we get to know them. We ask a range of questions um, to understand who their clients are. Um, what kind of problems they solve for their clients and mm-hmm. what kind of work they want to get more of. Um, and then we start trying to um, match that up with, um, you know, what are their clients reading and paying attention to? Mm-hmm. Um, and then I always say that we're kind of like a matchmaker um, where we're kind of uh, taking the thoughts and expertise of our clients and matching it up with the media. So we're, we're on a regular basis holding input calls with the attorneys with, you know, holding those knowledge extraction sessions. Um, what do you tell me what's happening in your practice area? Tell me about what recent cases you've worked on, recent matters, upcoming uh, changes in the law, new regulations, issues, that kind of thing. Then we come out of that with a certain amount of pitches. Um, so this is media pitches. So it's a, we'll come out of it with like three or four pitches. We get those approved by the attorneys and then we just start pitching them to the media. Um, and then we come back and we say, we've got this opportunity, that opportunity, this opportunity. So we've, we've lined up this article opportunity, this podcast interview, this TV interview. Um, and then we're just kind of on a regular basis, kind of, you know, sending those to, and then mm-hmm. there's other things, awards. So we're doing regular, you know, law 360s doing their, um, MVP of the year in this practice area, or it's, uh, you know, uh, all of its different series. Um, we're, and we monitor all those various awards and profile, or we get on the phone call and they say, um, you know, we just had this big win and we go, you know, that might be uh, great for litigator of the week, you know, or whatever it is, or we're kind of, because we are, we do this every day, we're, we can match up those opportunities. So, but it is a regular process. So it's not a, it's not a one and done, you know, and when you're saying that's kind of the old style where the, the attorney hires the advertising agency, they do the creative, it's filed away, it's done, it runs in the paper every month. This is a different model where we're kind of regularly meeting, we're going, okay, we've got these five opportunities, you know, and then we're briefing the attorneys and they're, you know, um, and we can write the article. We do a lot of the ghost writing sometimes. Some lawyers love to write it all, or we're briefing them before the interview. We're getting it set up. And then once the once the interview is done, the article is done, then we're helping them repurpose that content. So okay. we're, you know, we're putting it in email, we're putting it in social, we're, you know, putting it on their website. We're, you know, how do we get the most out of that content um, and get it in front of their, you know, clients and their referral partners and um, all of that. So, um, so that's, that's how it works. Lawyers, we like to believe that once we know a formula, we can kind of do it ourselves, right? Like I know the yeah. formula, and I'm, but they yeah. won't actually, we won't actually do it. We just think yeah. we can. Yeah. So, but if, if I think about it and say, if 
you're making the pitch to get somebody mm-hmm. uh, an interview or um, an article. What, why is it better or is it better to have somebody who's pitching all the time to make the pitch as opposed to the lawyer trying to do it themselves, even assuming they had time? Sure. Yeah. Well, time is obviously a biggie, but um, well, one, we we do this all the time. We know how to do it. I mean, I've got former, my team is almost entirely former journalists. So I'm a big believer in hiring former journalists. Um, so they know exactly what former journalists want. Um, they understand them. They understand the news cycle. They understand, you know, and it's, it is totally different than what lawyers think is a news story. I'll be honest. Um, so <laughs> we're often having those meetings with lawyers and they are uh, and you're after a while, when you've done this long enough, your brain thinks in news stories. So um, as like, I can't watch TV without starting to think about a way I can uh, spin, not the word spin is bad because it's got bad connotation, but how I can frame this for a client, um, what, what the angle is for a client. Um, and it's similar to, I guess, any profession, you do it long enough, you get very, very good at it. Um, but yes, uh, lawyers, lawyers just don't quite understand what makes a good news story and what the right angle is. I mean, some do, you know, I, there's, but for the most part, um, they don't understand newsworthiness. We're studying the media on a day to day basis. We know what is newsworthy. Mm-hmm. We know how to frame the angle. We know how to work with the media. We know how to do that legwork. Um, and then we know how to frame it up to, the other channels and what's going to work on emails, not going to work as well on social and, and how to, how to, you know, uh, maximize those channels as well. But, um, and we're also just monitoring each of these different media outlets and their various opportunities. There's so many, and they're so different, each one of them, um, and how you, how you, uh, change the angles for each, you know, what an angle for uh, a, a broadcast um, is going to be very different than a trade publication. Um, and you've got to think through the different audiences. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but a lot of it is time and, um, you know, the ability to just uh, really kind of, you know, uh, do it um, and do it consistently because consistency is really a big part of mm-hmm. it. You have to be consistent with this for it to have an impact. You can't just sort of do a story once a year. You might as well not do it. Yeah, uh, I see. I see that too. In fact, that's a lot of the reason I'm. Whether it may not be on PR, but it's having somebody to help you execute consistently. Whether yes. it's PR or the or the leadership work I'm doing is, is a yes. big part of the value. Yes. You know, one of the things that I've struggled with, and I know a lot of lawyers struggle with, is content. And let, let's mm-hmm. assume that somebody's actually blocked out time to create content. Mm -hmm. And what I've experienced is, what am I going to write about? Mm -hmm. That's not interesting. Mm -hmm. That's so simple. Mm -hmm. Nobody would ever care about Mm -hmm. that thing. Mm -hmm. And then we suffer from smart person syndrome. We try to put too much into too small a container. Yeah. So what do you do when you got a lot of ideas, you want to do this, but let's say you don't have a whole lot of time because you can choose between writing an article that may or may not get picked up or writing a pitch and working on a case that's going to make you money. Yeah. So, so what what advice can you offer in that situation? Work with ghostwriters. Um, so, uh, well, one, um, content people can um, help you find the golden nuggets in your can help you suss out what is good content and what is not. So um, I stress to my team all the time that that and I and I truly believe this, that half of creating good content is the interview process between the subject matter expert. So it hmm. is the process of getting the good information from the expert. Um, so we don't do Googleable content. So we don't create anything that I can't, that I could just go to Google and, and, uh, search. So we interview attorneys and create content that is, uh, that we're pulling out of these people's heads. But part of the skill that we have is that interview and really that comp that through that conversation, we are finding what what is interesting. We're finding that. And there is real value in that back and forth exchange, right? We've even published this guide, this knowledge extraction guide, 
um, with kind of an answer uh, framework because there is an art and a, a skill to those those answer that question process of getting that information out because there are constant roadblocks from attorneys who who think that way any subject any subject matter experts because we work in other professional services industries engineers and architects and um, who do kind of they're so deep in their industry and their expertise that it's very hard for them to see that they are too deep into it and that's why I see a lot of ghostwriters in this industry who are also attorneys. And I honestly think that's a mistake. I think our having a lay person who under who has now we obviously we work in legal, we've been working in legal for many, many years, we have a, 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 a enough expertise. But when you are also a lawyer, uh, to me, it kind of clouds things. Um, at, we kind of proudly wear our status as a lay person proudly because that enables us to kind of see it um, at a level that, you know, the clients will see it. Um, and also that people today are so busy, even your general counsel client who has just as much expertise as you, the lawyer, do, you don't want to make them work to understand uh, the, the topic. Mm -hmm. So you want to make it as clear as possible. And that requires getting absolutely clear on a topic and really getting it um, short, um, concise, really narrowing down on what is interesting about the topic, the announce. So that interview process is, is really critical in that, in that phase. So I would say work with a, 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 an expert content person who can help you do that, who can generate it back to you and whether you want to write some bullet points and then them write it for you, get it back to you, but find someone good who can do that for you and, and help you because sitting down and writing an article is not the best value, not the best use of your time, in, in my humble opinion. Um, and um, that really can help you. And also we can help make you sound even better than, um, than you can, honestly, we can take, you have the expertise. Our expertise is making, is taking your knowledge and your expertise and making you sound great and, and really conveying those ideas expertly. So that's the expertise we bring. So when you marry those two together, that is uh, what makes this process really effective. Yeah. I love that. Especially like, and I do a lot of writing and if you ask me to write a five page thing, that's easy. You asked me to write yeah. a five sentence thing or right. God forbid a script for a TikTok video, my yeah. head's going to explode. Yeah. That's the difficulty. Um, Cause yeah. I've just got too much, right? I got to, I got to right. share context. I've got to tell you how to, speaking of which, how do, I know, I know short form media is like, it's a very powerful tool now, whether it's on yeah. a TikTok or a Facebook or whatever, is that an important tool for professionals like lawyers and how how do you navigate that? Like the, the real short form stuff. Yeah. Um, we've, so we ourselves have dabbled in it. I'd love to do more of it with lawyers. Cause I think that um, just like we were just talking about the uh, getting to know people personally, for one um, LinkedIn just rolled out reels. Um, so mm. uh, this is LinkedIn saying we value uh, short uh, form video. I would love to see more lawyers doing it. I, I've seen law firms do, I think it could be used. So for example, law firms, um, a big uh, law gets passed, a new regulation. Lawyers will sit there and do this uh, very convoluted client alert, you know, an email and they pass it around the firm and Get everybody, wrong. yeah, but, and everybody nitpicks over the, the, phrases and it takes days to get out. And then a week later they send out and it's just a regurgitation of exactly what everyone already knew that the news put out immediately. Instead, if they did a, a short video, you know, of uh, some really short um, analysis, and I'm talking a few sentences, it would be much faster, uh, much uh, more effective um, than that um, written, you know, uh, brief. Um, that would be one way to do video very effectively. Um, I, and I'm seeing more and more firms do that. And I think it would be, and podcasts are another um, example of that, mm -hmm. but I think it, it could be something, I think, um, and it can be 
pretty easily, you know, we've, there's apps now with, um, you know, where you can have your script in front of you and you can barely tell. So a lot of lawyers don't like to be off the cuff on these things. So, and again, you can work with someone who can help you craft that message. If, you know, you could, you can go to somebody and you can say, here's the five things I want to say, and they can get you that script pretty quick and edit that down. Um, it's it's a quicker way, but it's also more effective. You know, there's a lot of our uh, data that show how much more video is consumed even on LinkedIn than other mediums. So absolutely, I'm a I'm a big fan of video. Yeah, uh, it's it's a, it's a challenge with with creators because mm-hmm. um, I mean that I, I may not be alone. Where I'm like, well. For it to be interesting, I need to spend more time, but nobody's right. going to watch more time. And if I, something's really short, who who would care? But the fact yeah. is, a lot of people care about short form because a lot of people are watching short form. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. So shifting up just a second, you know, one of the things that I've experienced is, is that some lawyers struggle with this business concept of ROI, mm-hmm. that making an investment in a service. Mm-hmm will pay it for itself and then some, but it takes some time. It's not, mm-hmm. you know, pay for itself this month. How, how should somebody think about ROI? What is the ROI of an investment in PR? And what kind of returns have you ex- had seen people experience? Yeah. So PR is how I explain if, if you're just adding PR. So PR is one mix in your marketing, one, one element of your marketing mix. So like I said, PR is your brand awareness. It's not a lead generation tactic. So okay. PR is that what I call top of the funnel. It's make people aware that we exist and um, inform them of what we do, right? Um, it's not nurture. It's not um, continue to stay top of mind. It's not um, uh, turn them into prospects. Um, uh, turn turn the turn prospects into actual clients. Um, so it's got to be part of an entire marketing mix. It's got to be part of an entire ecosystem of mm-hmm. tactics. So when I talk about ROI from PR, it's very specific. Are you getting the type of media coverage that you want to get? Are you getting in the outlets? Have you seen your uh, awareness? When you walk into a meeting, do people know who you are? When you go into a business development meeting, do people understand who you are and have a good uh, awareness of your expertise and your knowledge? It's not a direct legion, but if you have the entire ecosystem, um, if you're doing every single one of those things, absolutely, you should see an ROI um, and you should see a, a direct uh, impact. Um, there's no doubt um, that you your business will grow um, exponentially. In fact, there's a um, very clear link between um, if you punch above your weight um, in terms of your share of voice in a market. So um you will grow um, all things held equal um, at a faster rate than your competitors. That's been proven over and over again um, through all our clients. I, I believe that to be true. <laughs> um, are you, do you, is there a particular success story where you could point to and say, hey, the, this is work that we did where the strategies had a real big impact on a law firm and their reputation and their growth? Yeah, we, I mean, we work with a lot of different firms and a lot of them, um, say to us, um, you know, we, this has really elevated, um, our reputation. Um, this has, uh, impacted, um, you know, how our clients think of us. I like to quote, um, a particular case study of one particular attorney. Um, just cause it's a little sexy and, um, he kind of, he went from, he went from kind of an unknown from, in terms of a media standpoint to very known and it translated into, um, real business. So we had this, uh, uh, client who, um, is, uh, head of the, um, uh, white collar criminal defense, but also the corporate investigations practice of an Alabama, uh, litigation firm pretty unknown at the time, hadn't really done any media. Um, And um, when um, 
Robert Mueller started his investigation into Donald Trump into um, you know his possible Russian influence into the um, um, the uh, presidential election. We saw that as a real opportunity to pitch this particular attorney um, as a source on um, uh, special investigations. Hmm. Um, and we just started uh, working with him on uh, him being a source for the media on what would happen during this investigation. And he was he was honestly an ideal client, too. He provided real um, uh, meaty quotes. He understood he understood the PR game. He understood that um, he, he didn't just regurgitate what was happening. He said, you know, this is probably why Mueller did this. This is probably what's going to happen here, here's the background as to why this is going on. You know, here's the impact of this. You know, he'd provide it quick. He, you know, um, and we would get it out to the media. He would kind of he'd be available. So we got him sort of everywhere. You know, he was on NBC's Today Show. We got him, you know, on MSNBC, so the New York Times, Reuters, Bloomberg, everywhere. You know, he was just kind of. We sort of worked ourselves out of the job because you know, all the media were calling him and <laughs> it translated directly into business. You know, I mean, immediately it was business and it was, you know, him just be kind of becoming this star media star. Um, and that's kind of how that kind of niche expertise building can happen for a particular attorney. Now, for a firm as a whole, it also does, you know, wonders, you know, especially from a, um, you know, a firm, like, let's say a firm who has just really never done anything and we start getting them, we've improved their chambers uh, rankings, we get them um, a couple of profiles, um, um, they start writing articles on a regular basis, this, it goes from, you know, kind of obscure to really kind of having their name out there in a way mm. that they've never done before, and leads flowing in in a way that has never happened before. So it makes a it makes a real impact. But I love that story. I love that kind of case study just because it's sexy and people remember it. Um, and um, uh, it really kind of directly translated to business almost immediately. Yeah, I love that. And and you're working. It's not just national, right? If somebody's focused on a particular state or geography because of the way that they practice, absolutely, you, you work with them those folks too, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We do a lot of uh, regional, local, um, national international. Um, so the media has changed so much. It doesn't really matter where we are. It matters if we've got a good story to tell. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, it's just uh, making sure that we're providing them with a, a good, a good source and a good story. So. And as a um, journalist, yeah. they probably prefer to hear from a reliable source like your firm than a thousand lawyers trying to get on their, on the air one on a one-off basis. Oh, right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, they. I mean, you know, the media. Uh, yes, if if they understand how it all works, they love a PR. We so the beauty of the fact that we work uh, a, with a lot of law firms is we have a reputation now with a lot of journalists, so they know that we have a lot of lawyers, so we get a lot of perspective. Hey, I'm working on the story. Do you have anybody? Kind of emails. Mm -hmm. um, so. Um, that oh, yeah. helps a lot. Um, so yeah, they, they understand that this is a PR firm that does a lot of this kind of work. Um, so it, it helps. It's a two way street, um, which, which helps a lot. So if, if one of, uh, some, one of our viewers is interested in discovering whether this kind of strategy would work for them and can you just give us a couple of, give them a couple of tips on what kind of question, what, what does the general process look like and what kind of questions should somebody be asking to make sure they're picking out a firm that knows what they're doing? Yeah. Um, well, I mean, I, they want to see if they've done it before. They want to ask for case studies. Um, so, you know, what kind of firms have you worked with? Um, and show me the work that you've done before. Um, and uh, tell me, uh, give me some references. I mean, that's, it's always the proof is in the pudding, right? Um, hmm. So, and then, you know, I'd, I'd ask, uh, you know, how would you go about you know, obviously you don't want to ask for free strategy, mm -hmm. but give me a flavor of how you would go about promoting my firm. You know, what would be, because there are a lot, what I find um, is I talk to a lot of law firms who have 
worked with firms, and this is not in any way to criticize these firms, but they are generalist firms who don't understand how law firms work and the way, you know, like a lot, m- most of my, the firms I work with, if they got an inbound lead from somebody they don't know would kind of, that's just not, you know, what they want at all. So they're not looking for, they're not looking, they're not looking for the same ta- con- uh, tactics that a consumer law firm would mm-hmm. want. So mm-hmm. B2B is quite different. And a lot of generalist marketing agencies don't really understand uh, where to put your money with a, fir- with a law firm. So they don't know about chambers and partners or law 360 or, um, you know, the business media and, and why all of these tactics are really important. Um, they don't understand that for a lot of law firms, their clients are lawyers and house and that, you know, that that works that way or that the clients are executives. Uh, mm-hmm. So um, obviously for a consumer law firm, like a family law firm or something, it's quite different, but um, you want to make sure that they understand how your business, how do you make money? And how your decision maker makes decisions, um, and where that how they typically find a law firm, and and you can say well referrals, but you have to also understand how that referral process works. Yeah. yeah. Um. So that's really critical. So if uh, one of my favorite questions that I'm talking to law firms and in general is, uh, especially about marketing, is so I'll ask you, <laughs> what's if you were to envision your like ideal client Mm -hmm. from a, obviously from a law firm perspective, what, what would that ideal client look like for you? Mm. Uh, A firm that really understood the value of consistently demonstrating their expertise to the marketplace. So in, in whatever form it took PR content, but regularly demonstrating their expertise to their pro- prospects and referral base um, and the value of that consistency and really understood its value and uh, understood the value of n- not DIYing it. Of course, none of our clients really DIY it, but um, uh, really understood that and um understood the investment. Um, so, and obviously anybody we work with understands that, but, um, uh, yeah. Yeah. I've found, I found the same thing in general is you understand that you need to have the right players on your team to have strengths in areas you don't so that Mm -hmm. you can focus on an execution and someone to help you be consistent. Mm-hmm. And yep. not be episodic. That that's yeah. where so many lawyers struggle with mm-hmm. with sales and marketing, and I'm sure PR, where they get busy, so they turn everything off. Yeah, and and then before you know what happens, they're not busy, and you've turned everything mm-hmm. off. We um, always grow when there's a downturn in the market, yes. um, in the legal market, um, and that's because lawyers pull their head up and go, "Oh God, I got a market," you know, and that's the wrong time to market, um, you know, as you mm-hmm. know. So yeah. That's it's it's really important to to have a consist for this to just be a critical just to be part of your business in the same way that your accounting function is part of your business. Um, this is part of your business right. that you invest in all the time. So and it it's just uh, and also attorneys who understand that this isn't something I just hand to the marketing people and they run it. Um, that they know that I am the product, so I have to I have to be involved in it, but also get that uh, my expertise isn't writing, so I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, stay in my lane and let the, the those experts run with it. Um, but obviously, they want to find an, an agency who delivers on that. Um, mm-hmm. So and there's a lot that that don't. Um, but um, can really kind of, uh, but it, but investing in it in the same way you do other business functions. So, so if if somebody is interested in learning whether you'd be a fit for what your firm would be a fit for what they want, how would they get in touch with you? And, uh, and, yeah, go and I guess how does that process work in your firm? Yeah, um, so go to our website. It's rep dash inc. That's r e p dash i n k dot com. Um, and, um, uh, get in touch with me. It's Michelle at rep dash Um, and really it's just a, a initial conversation with me. I, uh, try to get a sense of, uh, the firm, the firm's size, um, the firm's goals, 
um, their appetite, uh, what or their capabilities in house, um, and then we can, we come up with a budget. Um, so once I kind of understand what 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 do they have, do they have an in house marketing people? Do they not? Who are we going to work with? How many attorneys do they have? You know, are are there multiple practice areas? Is there just one? What you know that the scope of work. Um, and then we develop a, a monthly budget um, and it's a very flexible arrangement. It's mm-hmm. not, uh, we don't lock anyone into any kind of long-term commitment at all. Um, and then we, we get to work really. So That's great. And, yeah. and you work with just to be, you know, you work with small firms too, right? We do. Yeah. yeah. We work, our sweet spot is, I would say in the, uh, well, it, it, it ranges, to be honest. Um, mm-hmm. We're kind of in the, um, we've worked with firms that are five attorneys to a hundred attorneys mm-hmm. on up. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, it's, I found so many of these strategies, firms in that are much smaller who may have less resources think that it's not for them. And it can, right. if, but the right targeted investment can help you compete with the bigger firms. Right. So, yeah. um, so I love that. I, I so pre- I could probably go on for hours, but I, I want to bring it in for a landing. I so appreciate uh, you making this time with me today. I learned something. I hope our, our listeners did as well. Oh, Are there well, any final it. thoughts you'd like to share? No, just, I would love to talk to any listeners if they have any questions, um, be happy to talk to them about PR. I'm really passionate about PR and content. Um, so, um, happy to continue the conversation offline with any listeners. Thank you so much, Michelle. And thanks to our sponsor, Answering Legal. Uh, You can see other episodes on your favorite podcast channel. And I'm always looking for ideas or questions for future episodes. So if you had something you'd like to share, go ahead and reach out. You can email me directly at doug at summit-success.com. Thanks. That's it for today. Bye for now.